There are no misconceptions about it. There is a lot of reaction to the simultaneous raids on homes in Florida and California linked to music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Today, we spotted private security at the estate with handguns. L.A. raid unfolded. Two of Combs' sons were handcuffed and detained. The latest lawsuit against the rapper lists a number of high-profile people. That includes a local rapper known as Young Miami. Young Miami, one half of the popular rap duo City Girls, finds herself at the center of a scandal that has rocked the music industry. In the lawsuit filed by Lil Rod against Puff Diddy, names of women were revealed as sex workers for Diddy. You guessed it, Young Miami's name was among that list. Daphne Joy and uh, Young Miami accused of being sex workers, sex workers for Diddy. Now this is more of Lil Rod's uh, allegations that's coming out in his lawsuit filing. These women received monthly payments from Diddy, made through Robin Green Hill. In the lawsuit, he alleges that Diddy's women of the night included Young Miami, Jade, and Daphne Joy would receive wire transfers or cash payments from Robin Green Hill. According to court documents filed, Young Miami also smuggled drugs on a private jet to a festival performance for Puff Diddy. And uh, then Young Miami allegedly transported drugs for Diddy. So uh, he also claimed that Young Miami traffic the drugs. Could all of these accusations against Young Miami be true? Young Miami is accused. In an amended lawsuit filed by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, explosive allegations have emerged accusing Young Miami of being involved in the transportation of a dangerous substance known as pink cocaine for Puff Diddy. This illicit substance, a combination of ecstasy and cocaine, is said to be a favorite of Diddy's. The court documents reveal shocking details of Young Miami's alleged role as a drug mule for the music mogul. According to the lawsuit, Young Miami, whose real name is Carisha Romeka Brownlee, is accused of transporting the drugs from Miami to Diddy. The court filing states that Diddy's regular supplier, Brendan Paul, failed to bring the substance as requested by Diddy. In a desperate move, Diddy's associate, Christina Corum, reportedly reached out to Young Miami to bring the illicit substance on a private jet. The lawsuit further claims that Lil Rod, the producer who filed the lawsuit against Diddy, personally witnessed Diddy using cocaine in the dressing room while rehearsing for Pharrell's Something in the Water Festival in Virginia. This shocking revelation adds another layer of complexity to the allegations against Diddy and raises questions about the extent of his involvement with illicit substances. Young Miami has not issued a response to the accusations made against her or the recent lawsuits involving her former boyfriend, Diddy. However, her cryptic tweet following the raids on Diddy's home stating, this finna be a fun summer, has left fans and followers speculating about her involvement and what lies ahead for both artists. The allegations against Young Miami and Puff Diddy have sent shockwaves through the music industry. Both artists have built successful careers and amassed a significant following. But this scandal threatens to tarnish their reputations and potentially derail their future endeavors. For Young, Miami, the accusations of being involved in the transportation of drugs for Puff Diddy could have serious consequences. If these allegations are proven true, it could lead to legal repercussions and damage her standing in the music industry. The public's perception of her as an artist and role model may also be negatively impacted potentially affecting her fan base and future collaboration. I'm outside the hip hop mogul's estate in the exclusive Holmby Hill section of Los Angeles. This is where federal agents conducted the surprise raid, which is reportedly tied to an ongoing investigation involving allegations of sexual assault and sex trafficking. As for Puff Diddy, this scandal adds another layer of controversy to his already tumultuous legal issues. With the raids on his homes and lawsuits filed against him and now the allegations of involvement with illicit substances, Diddy's reputation is at stake. The public's perception of him as a music mogul and influential figure could be significantly impacted, potentially affecting his business ventures and relationships within the industry. Legal experts are closely examining the implications of the allegations against Young Miami and Puff Diddy. If the claims are proven true, both artists could face serious legal consequences. Transporting illicit substances and being involved in illegal activities can lead to criminal charges and significant penalties. The outcome of the ongoing legal battle will determine the fate of these artists and set a precedent for similar cases in the future. Beyond the immediate impact on Young Miami and Puff Diddy, this scandal raises broader questions about the music industry as a whole. It shines a spotlight on the potential dark underbelly of fame and success, where allegations of use and illegal activities can lurk behind the scenes. The public's fascination with celebrity scandals and the tabloid culture that surrounds them 
only amplifies the significance of this story. The music industry has a long history of scandals and controversies, but this case stands out due to the involvement of high-profile artists like Young Miami and Puff Diddy. It serves as a reminder that fame and success do not shield individuals from the consequences of their actions. The repercussions of this scandal could extend beyond the individuals involved, impacting the industry's reputation and prompting a closer examination of the culture within. In another breath, Young Miami has been accused of being involved in a sex worker ring allegedly run by none other than Puff Diddy. Before the accusations that have rocked the industry, Young Miami faced personal struggles and setbacks. However, her determination and undeniable talent propelled her forward. With her unique style and infectious energy, she quickly became a fan favorite. Her confident and charismatic stage presence, coupled with her distinct voice and catchy hooks, made her a standout in the male-dominated world of hip-hop. Beyond her music career, Young Miami has also made headlines for her personal life. She has been open about her experiences as a mother and the difficulties of balancing her career with her responsibilities at home. Fans admire her authenticity and relatability as she stays true to herself in the face of adversity. However, Young Miami's success has not come without controversy. She has faced criticism and scrutiny from the media and the public, but she has always remained resilient. Throughout it all, she has continued to push boundaries and break barriers, solidifying her status as a force to be reckoned with in the music industry. The shocking allegations made in the lawsuit filed by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones against music mogul Diddy also accuses young Miami and model Daphne Joy, the mother of 50 Cent's son, of being involved in a sex worker ring allegedly run by Diddy. According to the court documents, Diddy would boast to Lil Rod about paying young Miami, Daphne Joy, and Jade Ramey a monthly stipend in exchange for their services. The suit claims that Lucian Charles Grange, CEO of UMG, authorized Motown Records and Universal Music Group to provide financial resources to Diddy and his love records through wire transfers to Diddy's accountant, Robin Greenhill. Lil Rod alleges that Greenhill ensured the funds were used for payments to sex workers. The lawsuit specifically names Young Miami, Jade Ramey, and Daphne Joy as the women who received these payments. It suggests that they were paid a monthly fee to work as Diddy's sex workers, raising questions about the dynamics of power and exploitation within the music industry. Daphne Joy, known for her past relationship with 50 Cent and being the mother of his son, Sire, has yet to comment on the allegations. Beyond the individuals directly involved, the scandal raises broader questions about power dynamics and exploitation within the music industry. The allegations shed light on the potential abuses that can occur behind the scenes, highlighting the need for transparency and accountability. The industry as a whole may face increased scrutiny and pressure to address these issues and create a safer and more equitable environment for all artists. Legal battle that lies ahead will determine the ultimate consequences for Young Miami, Diddy, and Daphne Joy. If the allegations are proven true, the potential legal ramifications could be severe, including damage to their reputations, financial penalties, and potential criminal charges. On the other hand, if the allegations are proven false, the individuals involved may seek legal recourse for defamation and other damage. Another name mentioned in relation to Puff Diddy's illegal activities is Brendan Paul. The former Syracuse University men's basketball player had once been in the spotlight for his athletic prowess, but little did anyone know that his life would take a dramatic and illicit turn. It all began when federal agents raided Puff Diddy's lavish mansion in Los Angeles on the same day Brendan Paul was apprehended at Opelika Airport in Miami. The timing of these events raised eyebrows and led to speculation about a possible connection between the two. The shocking allegations against Brendan and Paul came to light when music producer Rodney Jones filed a lawsuit accusing Paul of being Puff Diddy's According to Jones, he personally witnessed Paul involved in illegal activities, including the transportation and distribution of and on behalf of the rapper. The lawsuit claims that Brendan Paul was responsible for transporting illegal on flights between Los Angeles, Miami, Virginia, the Caribbean, and even London. These allegations paint a picture of a vast and far-reaching operation, implicating Paul in a web of criminal activities. Despite the gravity of the accusations, Brendan Paul has remained silent, neither personally addressing the allegations nor seeking legal representation. His silence has only fueled speculation and intensified public interest in the case. On the day of his arrest, federal agents discovered contraband in the form of inside Brendan Paul's travel bags. 
This shocking revelation further solidified the allegations against him and added a new layer of criminality to the case. The 25-year-old former basketball star was promptly booked for cocaine and controlled substance possession. However, he was released on bail after posting $2,500, according to Miami-Dade County court records. His first hearing is scheduled for April 24th, where the full weight of the allegations will be addressed. Despite allegedly working as an associate of Puff Diddy, Brendan Paul's residence is listed as his parents' home in Chagrin Falls, Ohio. This detail raises questions about the extent of his involvement with the rapper and the nature of their relationship. Brendan Paul's basketball journey began after attending Brewster Academy, a prestigious private boarding school in New Hampshire, and Hawken High School in Ohio. He then went on to play for Syracuse University before transferring to Fairmont State for the 2020-21 season. After his college playing career ended, Brendan Paul reportedly ventured into the world of music production as an amateur. It is through his music endeavors that he is believed to have crossed paths with Puff Diddy, eventually leading to their alleged association. The shocking arrest of Brendan Paul took place at the airport in Miami, where he was with Puff Diddy, attempting to board the rapper's private plane. Federal agents swooped in, taking the 25-year-old into custody and forever changing the trajectory of his life. Young Miami, rapper come smuggler. Young Miami, born Caracia Romeka Brownlee on February 11, 1994 in Miami, Florida, had a childhood that was far from easy. Growing up in the tough neighborhoods of Miami, she faced numerous challenges and hardships. However, it was her love for music that provided her with an escape from the harsh realities of her surroundings. Young Miami is the mother to two children, Jai Malik Wiggins Jr., whom she had with Jai Wiggins, and Summer Miami Llewellyn, whom she had with Southside. From a young age, Young Miami showed a natural talent for music. She would spend hours writing lyrics and honing her craft, dreaming of one day making it big in the industry. Her determination and passion were evident, even in her early years. As she entered her teenage years, Young Miami faced a turning point in her life. She met fellow aspiring rapper JT, and the two quickly formed a bond over their shared love for music. Together, they would spend countless hours writing and recording songs, dreaming of the day they would be discovered. In 2011, Young Miami and JT, Jatavia Shakara Johnson, decided to take their music career to the next level and formed the rap duo known as City Girls. They started gaining attention in the local Miami music scene, performing at small venues and building a loyal fan base. Their unique style and raw talent set them apart from their peers, and it wasn't long before they caught the attention of Quality Control Music, a prominent record label. In 2017, the duo recorded their debut studio track, Get a powerful diss track aimed at their ex-boyfriends who failed to support them financially. Young Miami took to social media to promote the song, even going as far as paying DJs to play it in clubs. The track quickly gained traction thanks to its infectious beat and a sample from Kia's iconic hit, My Neck, My Back, Lick It. The City Girls' raw talent and unapologetic lyrics resonated with listeners and their popularity skyrocketed. Their music became an anthem for those who had faced similar struggles and hardships. The duo's authenticity and relatability struck a chord with fans, propelling them into the spotlight. Their breakthrough came in 2018, when they signed with Quality Control Music, an imprint of Motown and Capitol Records. This partnership opened doors for the City Girls, allowing them to reach a wider audience and showcase their unique style. Shortly after signing, they were featured on Drake's chart-topping single, In My Feelings. The collaboration introduced the City Girls to a massive fan base and solidified their position in the music industry. Despite their rising success, the City Girls faced a major setback when JT was arrested and charged with aggravated identity theft. She was sentenced to 24 months in federal prison, leaving Young Miami to carry the torch and continue promoting their music. Undeterred by JT's absence, Young Miami took to strip clubs, paying DJs $20 to play their songs. Her dedication paid off as their music started gaining traction and capturing the attention of fans and industry insiders alike. During JT's incarceration, the City Girls' popularity continued to soar. Their debut mixtape, Period, released in May 2018, reached number 16 on the Heat Seekers albums chart. The mixtape showcased their raw talent and unfiltered lyrics, earning critical acclaim and further solidifying their place in the hip hop scene. To document their journey, the City Girls released a documentary titled Point Blank Period in August 2018. The documentary provided an intimate look into their lives, showcasing their struggles, triumphs, and unwavering determination to succeed. Despite the challenges they faced, the City Girls' music continued to resonate with audiences. 
Kings. In November 2018, they released their debut studio album, Girl Code, featuring collaborations with Cardi B, Lil Baby, and Jackie. The album received positive reviews from critics and debuted at number 63 on the Billboard 200 chart. The City Girls' early beginnings in the music industry were marked by resilience, authenticity, and a relentless pursuit of their dream. Their unique style and unapologetic lyrics set them apart, captivating audiences and establishing them as a force to be reckoned with in the hip-hop world. Two singles from Girl Code, Twerk, featuring Cardi B and Act Up, further solidified the City Girls' presence on the charts. Twerk peaked at number 29 on the Billboard Hot 100, while Act Up reached number 26. These successes earned the duo platinum certification from the Recording Industry Association of America, RIAA, further cementing their status as rising stars in the hip-hop scene. The City Girls' success continued to soar with the release of their second studio album, City on Lock. Although the album leaked online in June 2020, it didn't dampen the excitement surrounding its official release. City on Lock showcased the duo's growth and versatility, receiving praise from fans and critics alike. The album featured guest appearances from Yo Gotti, Doja Cat, Lil Durk, and Lil Baby, further elevating the City Girls' profile in the music industry. Their collaboration with these established artists demonstrated their ability to hold their own alongside some of the biggest names in the business. While City on Lock received critical acclaim, it also garnered moderate commercial success. The album's impact was felt beyond the charts, as it solidified the City Girls' position as a force to be reckoned with in the hip-hop scene. Their unique style, unfiltered lyrics, and captivating performances continue to resonate with audiences, further expanding their fan base. In June 2022, the rumors surrounding the relationship between Puff Diddy and Young Miami reached a boiling point. Fans and media outlets had been speculating about their connection for over a year, and finally the truth was revealed. During an episode of Young Miami's podcast, Carisha Please, which airs on Diddy's network Revolt TV, the two musicians confirmed that they were indeed an item. Just a few weeks later, Later, the couple made a public appearance at the BT Awards on June 26, 2022. Diddy was being honored with the prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award, and Young Miami took the opportunity to show her unwavering support. As Diddy delivered his acceptance speech, Young Miami held up a vibrant red sign that read, Go Poppy. The gesture was a testament to her, dedication and love for him. However, the moment took an unexpected turn when Diddy failed to acknowledge Young Miami during his speech. Instead, he mentioned his past relationships with Cassie and the late Kim Porter. This oversight left many wondering if there was trouble in paradise. But Diddy quickly rectified the situation by taking to social media to express his gratitude for Young Miami's support. In a now-deleted Instagram post, he wrote, This is one of the sweetest things anyone's ever done for me. Thank you, Shawty Wop. As the year drew to a close, Diddy surprised the world with a heartfelt announcement on December 10th, 2022. He revealed that he had welcomed a new addition to his family, a baby girl named Love Sean Combs. The news sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry and the internet was abuzz with speculation about the identity of the baby's mother. With the revelation of Diddy's new arrival, questions arose about the status of his relationship with Young Miami. Some labeled her as his side chick, assuming that she was not the mother of his child. The rumors and chatter reached a fever pitch, prompting Diddy to take to social media to defend Young Miami and their relationship. In response to the speculation, Puff Diddy tweeted, Never has been, never will be. She's very important and special to me, and I don't play about my shoddy wop. I don't discuss things on the internet, and I will not start today. Despite the challenges and public scrutiny, Young Miami and Puff Diddy continued to support each other. They found solace in their shared faith, often attending church together and praying as a couple. Young Miami praised Puff Diddy for his honesty and upfront nature, stating that there were no secrets between them. As their relationship progressed, Young Miami and Puff Diddy realized that they wanted different things. Young Miami, still in the early stages of her career, wanted to focus on her music and personal growth. Puff Diddy, on the other hand, had already established himself as a music mogul and had different priorities. The combination of conflicting statements, trust issues, public scrutiny, and differing priorities ultimately led to the decision to end their relationship. Young Miami and Puff Diddy realized that they were better off as friends and decided to part ways amicably. While their breakup may have come as a shock to fans, it was a decision made with careful consideration. Young Miami and Puff Diddy 
valued their friendship and wanted to preserve it amidst the challenges they faced as a couple. Following their breakup, Young Miami and Puff Diddy made it clear that they remained good friends. They chose to prioritize their friendship and support each other's endeavors. This decision was met with mixed reactions from fans who were hoping for a reconciliation. As time went on, Young Miami and Puff Diddy found solace in their separate paths. They surrounded themselves with supportive friends and family, focusing on their own well-being and happiness. While their romantic chapter had come to an end, their friendship remained intact, serving as a reminder of the bond they shared. The many allegations against Diddy. Puff Diddy's reputation has been tarnished by a series of sexual assault allegations that have cast a dark shadow over his illustrious career. Lil Rod, whose real name is Rodney Jones, is a producer who had the opportunity to work closely with Puff Diddy on his latest album. However, what started as a dream collaboration quickly turned into a nightmare for Lil Rod. In his lawsuit, Lil Rod accuses Puff Diddy of not only harassing him, but also trafficking him for over a year. These allegations paint a disturbing picture of a pattern of sexual misconduct by Puff Diddy. Lil Rod claims that he was forced to engage in sexual acts by Puff Diddy and was coerced into soliciting sex workers for him. These alleged abuses took place while Lil Rod was working for Puff Diddy on his latest album. The lawsuit alleges that Puff Diddy forcibly touched Lil Rod as part of his pattern and practice of engaging in sexual misconduct. It further claims that Puff Diddy sexually trafficked and drugged Lil Rod, leaving him in a state of confusion and vulnerability. Lil Rod vividly recalls waking up naked, dizzy, and disoriented, finding himself in bed with two sex workers and Puff Diddy himself. These shocking details provide a glimpse into the alleged activities that took place under Puff Diddy's roof. Puff Diddy, through his lawyer Sean Holly, vehemently denies these allegations, calling them pure fiction. Holly asserts that there is overwhelming evidence to prove that the claims made by Lil Rod are complete lies. This is not the first time Puff Diddy has faced such accusations. The music mogul has previously been embroiled in sexual assault allegations, adding to the controversy surrounding him. The lawsuit filed by Lil Rod includes several shocking photos that allegedly depict parties at Puff Diddy's house, where minors and sex workers were trafficked and supplied with These photos provide a disturbing glimpse into the alleged activities that took place under Puff Diddy's roof, further supporting Lil Rod's claims. The lawsuit not only targets Puff Diddy, but also names several other individuals and entities, including Puff Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Quorum, his son Justin, Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian Grange, former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Habtamarium, and Combs Enterprises. They are accused of conspiring with Puff Diddy and profiting off his alleged crimes in what is referred to as a RICO enterprise, essentially organized crime. The complaint brings forth claims of assault, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and violations of sex trafficking laws, among others. Lil Rod is seeking a staggering $30 million in damages, highlighting the severity of the allegations and the impact they have had on his life. If the court finds in favor of Lil Rod, Puff Diddy and the other defendants could face significant financial penalties. Additionally, a successful lawsuit could result in criminal charges for Puff Diddy and the other individuals involved. However, the potential consequences don't end with financial penalties. A successful lawsuit could also result in criminal charges for Puff Diddy and the other individuals involved. The allegations of sexual assault and sex trafficking are serious crimes that carry substantial penalties, including imprisonment. If found guilty, Puff Diddy's career and personal life could be forever changed. The allegations of sexual assault and sex trafficking are serious crimes that carry substantial penalties, including imprisonment. The outcome of this lawsuit will have far-reaching implications for Puff Diddy and the music industry as a whole. As serious as it sounds, this isn't the only sexual allegations or lawsuit Puff Diddy has been involved in. There are the shocking allegations made by Cassie Ventura against Puff Diddy. It all began in the early 2000s when Cassie, a talented singer and model, crossed paths with the music mogul himself. Despite their significant age difference, their love quickly became the talk of the town. Diddy, the founder of Bad Boy Records, had already made a name for himself in the music industry, launching the careers of iconic artists like the notorious Big and Mary J. Blige. And Cassie, with her undeniable talent and stunning beauty, was poised to make her mark. As Cassie's star began to rise, so did her connection with Diddy. They were often seen together at red carpet events, parties, and exotic vacations. Their relationship seemed to defy all odds, capturing the attention of fans and critics alike. But behind the glamorous facade, there were whispers of a tumultuous relationship. Rumors started circulating about Diddy's controlling behavior and alleged mistreatment of Cassie. The couple's public displays of affection masked a darker reality that was yet to be unveiled. The media couldn't get enough of their love story, 
but little did they know the truth that lay beneath the surface. Cassie's journey with Diddy was far from a fairy tale romance. As the allegations would later reveal, their relationship was marred by a toxic dynamic that would have far-reaching consequences. Despite the rumors and whispers, Cassie remained by Diddy's side, standing as a pillar of strength in the face of adversity. But as time went on, the cracks in their relationship became harder to ignore. Friends and insiders started to notice the signs of trouble. Diddy's possessiveness and controlling behavior were becoming more apparent, raising concerns about Cassie's well-being. The world watched as their love story took a darker turn, leaving many to wonder what was really happening behind closed doors. Cassie's allegations sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry as she bravely spoke out about the physical and sexual abuse she experienced at the hands of Diddy. Her claims were not limited to isolated incidents but spanned a period of time, painting a harrowing picture of their relationship. Relationship. The world watched as Cassie's story unfolded, with many wondering how such a high-profile couple could have such a dark secret. The allegations not only exposed the alleged abuse, but also shed light on the toxic work environment that surrounded Diddy. Roger Bonds, Diddy's former head of security, corroborated Cassie's claims, revealing that he had witnessed the abusive behavior firsthand. He described a toxic atmosphere where he felt compelled to cover up Diddy's misdeeds, creating an environment of fear and silence. Bond's decision to speak out was a turning point in the narrative, as his revelations added credibility to Cassie's allegations. The world began to question the true nature of Diddy's public persona and the extent of his abusive behavior. In response to the allegations, Diddy vehemently denied any wrongdoing. His attorney, Ben Braffman, released a statement emphasizing that settling a lawsuit does not imply guilt. The public was left to grapple with the conflict conflicting narratives presented by Cassie and Diddy. However, less than 24 hours after Cassie filed the lawsuit, news broke that the former couple had reached a settlement for an undisclosed amount. The sudden resolution raised questions about what truly happened behind closed doors and what evidence or circumstances led to this agreement. Brathman clarified that the settlement should not be seen as an admission of guilt on Diddy's part. He stated that Diddy was happy they reached a mutual settlement and wished Cassie the best. But the fact that a settlement was reached suggests that there may have been some validity to Cassie's claims. Another alleged abuse that has Puff Diddy's name all over it is with Gina Hewen. In a resurfaced 2019 interview, Gina Hewen, a former partner of music mogul Puff Diddy, bravely speaks up about the alleged abuse she endured during their relationship. Gina Hewen's story is one that reveals the horrifying reality of physical abuse in relationships. In her interview, she recounts one particularly brutal incident that stands out in her memory. It was a moment that would forever change her life. She shared gory stories of how Puff Diddy abused her. Gina alleges that she endured a pattern of physical abuse throughout her relationship with Puff Diddy. But the abuse Gina endured was not limited to physical violence. She also alleges significant emotional abuse throughout her relationship with Puff Diddy. The scars left by this form of abuse may be invisible, but they can be just as damaging. The emotional abuse Gina endured highlights the power dynamics at play in their relationship. It was a toxic cycle of control and manipulation that left her feeling trapped and powerless. The emotional abuse Gina experienced had a profound impact on her self-esteem and mental well-being. What makes Gina's story even more disturbing is her claim that everyone who was privy to their relationship allowed the alleged abuse to take place. This raises important questions about the responsibility of those around us to intervene and protect victims of abuse. The fact that no one stepped in to stop the emotional torment Gina endured is deeply troubling. Gina's story takes an even more heartbreaking turn when she reveals a shocking offer she received regarding her pregnancy. In a moment of vulnerability, she turned down an unimaginable sum of money, hoping to prove the genuineness of her love and intentions. Puff Diddy allegedly offered her $5,000 to terminate the pregnancy. Gina's decision to prioritize her emotional connection over financial gain is a powerful testament to the lengths people will go to seek love and validation, even in the face of abuse and manipulation. It is a heartbreaking reminder of the complexities of relationships and the sacrifices individuals may make in the pursuit of love. Gina's story is a a chilling reminder of the dark side of fame and power dynamics in relationships. Her allegations against Puff Diddy shed light on the devastating impact of physical and emotional abuse. The shocking offer she received regarding her pregnancy further highlights the complexities and sacrifices individuals may face in toxic relationships. With all of Diddy's dark past, could there be truth to the accusations against Young Miami? If yes, what does the future hold for her? Click on the videos on your screen to enjoy similar content.